Imagine clicking onto a really cool website and then being able to actually step into your computer and walk around. At the Marion Koshland Science Museum of the National Academy of Sciences in Washington, D.C., that's exactly what they've done. In this one, we have this mural of people from around the world and you can explore and see what kind of bacteria, viruses, fungus, and parasites might infect these people. What we really strive to be is a digital learning zone so people can come in and look at issues that affect their lives. Issues like global warming and infectious diseases, the two exhibits that were on display at the Koshland Museum when I visited recently. In its three years, the museum has tackled subjects with a range in scope, like microscopic viruses or changes in global temperature, that would be difficult to present using traditional displays. I think that because we focus a lot on you know, really showing things through visualizations and really making things come alive through multimedia visualizations, um, we're really interested in things at those scales because we can show them in sort of unique and creative ways. A combination of interactive displays and multimedia let people experience exhibits in ways most museums don't. No static dioramas or printed charts passively telling you about a certain subject here. Instead, Koshland's unique approach guides you in discovering and understanding at your own pace. Each of their exhibits is based on as many as 75 reports. Museum officials work with a team of researchers from the National Academy of Sciences who write the reports and decide the focus of the exhibits. We build the exhibits based on these reports, and this is sort of our collection. So a natural history museum might have a lot of, you know, stuffed animals or great rocks or something like that, and what we have is a collection of books. After a subject is decided, the exhibit is authored. Then it's up to museum designers and multimedia developers to come up with an entertaining and accurate display. You have to get creative about how you're going to show this. How are you going to show things that are so tiny you can't see, or so large that it's beyond the scope of you know, your average human? And where traditional museums often cater toward the younger set, Koshland seeks to attract an older crowd. That's something Shugert says visitors appreciate. We found that adults respond very, very well. Actually, we get a lot of, of anecdotal comments from adults that, oh, I'm so glad there's a place for me. I'm so glad that this museum is aimed at adults. That's not to say young people won't find the museum's exhibits engaging. We actually found that our perfect visitor was an adult with a teenager. Because the teenager's willing to get in there. They, they press the buttons. They move the screens around. They're not afraid of the technology. And the adults have a tendency to stand back and not necessarily engage immediately with technology, but they sit there and they kind of read through things and they, they look and, and they try to understand what they're seeing. Once they're taken down, the exhibits travel around the country to other museums. And of course, they're all available online. For Discovery News, I'm Jorge Rivas.